Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are putting our thinking caps on, and we are going to learn today. We're going to have a little bit of an impromptu meteorite 101. And this is a topic that I know virtually nothing about. That's why I'm asking a friend of mine, Scott McGregor, who's on the Knowledge Bowl Light crew, and he's been with us for several years now to give us a little bit of knowledge. We haven't covered it on this channel before, and it's something I constantly get hit up in the comments about. Uh, everyone says they have diamonds and meteorites. They have Lonsdale lights. They have Carbonado diamonds. And the thing is, I don't know enough to even have that conversation with them. So, Scott, maybe you can tell us a little bit. And first of all, thanks for joining us and sharing your information with us. I really appreciate it. Happy to be here. Good. The the three things I'm gonna I'm gonna let you loose. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna. There's no leash tonight at all. Um, the I know the three things that we kind of talked about you going over today uh, and educating us about and setting expectations really uh, about the th uh, three things: uh, Carbonado diamonds, uh, Lons Delight diamonds, and. Um, diamonds in other meteorites like Canyon Diablo. So with that, I hope that was a worthy introduction. Please, if you would, Scott, educate us and myself. Thanks, Topher. Hey, the motivation for this is, is there are just so many fake diamond meteorites out there. If you search any of the oh, eBay or Etsy or any of those, you, you diamond meteorite, oh my God, the stuff that comes up is so blatantly fake and it's really disappointing. And the fact that this stuff sells and people end up buying it. Um, it turns out that, that diamonds do occur in meteorites. Um, they are common in some types of meteorites, but usually they're what are called nano diamonds, which means really, really, really small. <laughs> so you don't even see them. Um, some are bigger, and we'll talk about some of the bigger ones uh, uh, in a little bit here, but they, there's sort of three main groups of meteorites where you can find diamonds. And the first one are, are urolites. Mm -hmm. uh, urolites are between 5 or 10% carbon themselves, and the highly shocked urolites, uh, where they've faced a lot of sort of physical impact and other things, will often have these nano diamonds in them. And it's not much to see. If you have an electron microscope, you can see them. But generally, uh, you need a pretty powerful loop or microscope to, to see the nano diamonds and urolites. You and know Scott, they're there. Scott, if we can, I apologize. Can we just take one step back and talk about the creation of diamonds? There's two things that are required for creation of diamonds. Maybe we can just start from that very entry level. And, and I'm sorry if you would pick up from so, there. So di diamonds are basically carbon. They're just an altered form of carbon that's a lot prettier than charcoal. Uh, they uh, are formed generally under high pressure and high temperature. Okay. And we're not talking like, you know, put it in a vice. We're talking about, you know, like, you know, many, many, many gigapascals of, of uh, pressure here. And so uh, that will turn carbon, if it's compacted enough under sufficient pressure, uh, it will transform into a prettier material diamond. Now, diamonds are still carbon. Uh, you could make a nice little campfire out of diamonds if you were so willing. Uh, they burn just fine, uh, same as charcoal. Uh, but uh, uh, they have that property that they're extremely hard. And that's what's interesting about them. So for example, when diamonds are in meteorites, you'll often hear from people who cut meteorites, how they hate it when they're diamonds and meteorites because yep. they get very hard to cut. So people who've cut urolites, some urolites that are not shocked cut fairly easily. Some are really hard to cut and it takes a long time to do so. Uh, the other category of iron, uh, the other category of meteorites that have diamonds in them, one is irons, especially those with graphite inclusions. And I'm gonna talk about those. And then I'm gonna talk about carbonato diamonds, which are diamonds themselves. And so let me uh, screen share here and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about these. This is a graphite nodule, and it is a normal graphite nodule that you would find in Canyon Diablo. These nodules, they're quite pretty, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the black graphite uh, there, and you can see the white. That's actually reflecting metal. So it's a combination of the iron and the black graphite. And these are the typical ones 
are found all over. They typically weather out of some of the larger Canyon Diablo meteorites, and they cut like butter. Uh, graphite is extremely soft. Think of it like pencil lead. Uh, it it uh, is trivial to cut, and there's not that much metal in it. You know, the, the wire saw or the uh, saw blade just slices through these. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a meteorite, uh, one of these graphite nodules that is um, heavily shocked, and especially right around the rim of the crater, that was the maximum pressure, maximum heat, maximum impact, right around the very rim of the crater, you get something that looks completely different. And it looks like, it looks like this. And it's quite different than the other. And you can see that uh, it was intensely uh, shocked. You see all those sort of metal uh, traces that, that sort of lost the, the um, the seams and now they're really agitated looking yeah. look at it more closely here you can you can see this oh. and this was hit sufficiently hard that some of that graphite got converted into diamond and you can't really see it here um you can see within the black areas that there's some sort of like granule looking things mm -hmm. that's diamond in there uh it's not real easy to see because the diamond is mixed with the graphite and so it's it's a dark color it's not like a you know, crystal sparkling clear thing to see. It's it's more charcoal looking, but there are diamonds in there. And um, Craig Zleiman cut this. And it was interesting because there's an email exchange going on over what is this and so forth. And I'm gonna read a, an excerpt from Craig's email. I think it would just be uh, uh, fun here. Craig says, this thing is truly uncuttable. It tore teeth off a bandsaw blade, bent lapidary, lapidary blades and ate wire like it was breakfast cereal. I couldn't cut it. So I sent it to Martin Sills, who couldn't cut it either. And he sent it back to me. And I ultimately just kept burning wire until after eight days on the wire saw, it was finally cut. Wow. And the standing was equally difficult. So it's really hard to cut something if what you're cutting it with isn't as hard, is only as hard as what you're cutting. Yeah. So that's the challenge on this. Wow. That is so fascinating. So again, it's not beautiful diamonds like you would wear on a ring, but there's significant diamond content in this. Now, what I'm going to show you is what happens if it gets even more shocked. Uh, so this is uh, one that was found fairly recently and was studied at ASU uh, and is kind of interesting. Oh, by the way, this is, this is a close-up of the last one, sorry. Uh, so you can see a little bit uh, of the structure there, apologize. So if it shock it even more, you get something that looks like this. Wow. And you can see that the metal is now completely disorganized. Yeah. It's no longer in seams or, you know, you can't even see where it used to be organized. Total disruption, yeah. Total disruption and scattering here. And what's interesting is if you zoom in on this, now you can actually yeah, yeah. see the diamond areas here. And so those sort of um, crystalline looking things in the middle there that look in seams, appear in yeah. seams, those are diamonds, but those are also Lonsdaleite. And let me explain the difference between diamonds and Lonsdaleite. So diamonds have a cubic uh, crystalline structure or a, a octahedral crystalline structure. And Lonsdaleite is a little different. It's a hexagonal structure. And it is on some axes harder than diamond uh, if you catch it on edge, if you catch it right in the center um, against the, the, the plate, it's not as hard as a diamond. But if you're using it as an abrasive or something like that, it would be harder than diamond because you'll catch some of those edges. So Lon's Delight uh, occurs in meteorites that are extremely, extremely shocked. Um, there's some great studies on this, but they never appear as large things. So if anybody tells you that they have Lon's Delight, in fact, I think if you look on eBay, there's some like these white golf ball looking things. Exactly. Yeah. And they, they sell them as Lonsdaleite. What those are, those are alumina ceramic mill balls. So in grinding mills for when they grind powders and things like that, they dump in all these, these indes nearly indestructible <laughs> ceramic balls yeah, yeah. and they, they crush them all around and it grinds things up. They're, they're extremely hard. They have a hardness of, you know, nine or higher on the Mohs scale. Uh, so they're like sapphire hard, but they're not diamond hard. And they're not diamond, and they're definitely not Lonsdaleite. Uh, Lonsdaleite gets to be about as big as one millimeter. So anything, anybody selling you Lonsdaleite bigger than a millimeter, uh, I don't think so. 
Um, <laughs> I appreciate you calling that out by by detail because again, that's one of the things that we're trying to do here in the Knowledge Bowl Ed channel is make sure that we're giving accurate information and also attacking the misinformation. And there are so many people who so many pictures associated with Lon's Delight that are not Lon's Delight that the web is almost useless for teaching you now. It's full of so much bad information that if you search for it, you're going to get these little mill balls thrown at you all day. So if people tell you that they have meteoric diamonds and they're bigger than a millimeter or two, okay, they're probably false with one exception, and we're gonna talk about that now. And that's, uh, that's, uh, um, uh, that's carbonado diamonds. And carbonado diamonds are interesting because um, they found them and they didn't think they were extraterrestrial originally. Uh, they used them for industrial abrasives. Uh, it's kind of fun because uh, they would find these in streams, mostly in Brazil and also in Central Africa, and they would they would crush them and they'd use them for for abrasives. And they're very good at abrasives, but they um, uh, if you facet them, they look black and opaque. And you may actually see fine jewelry with black diamonds in it, and those are often natural carbonados. They can also be treated uh, other diamonds, but often they're um, the black carbonados. And they're not very big typically, they can get larger. This is a carbonado diamond and I'm gonna to switch to screen share so you'll be able to see it a little better. But this is a relatively big carbonado diamond. Yeah. This is 3.3 grams um, and uh, that would be 16.7 carats <laughs> of carbonado diamond. And let me go to screen share here and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, say a little more on this. This is very exciting for me because I've heard about these so much and I've had so many people communicate with me saying they have them, but they're, you know, dump truck size. So carbonado diamonds are, carbonado basically means carbon or charcoal uh, in Spanish. And they were named because they look like charcoal. And if anybody shows you, they say, oh, it's a carbonado diamond and it doesn't look this color. It's not a carbonado diamond. And they typically have this sort of interesting metallic, almost um, glassy mm -hmm. uh, sheen to them. Uh, they've been weathered over time. Uh, they're about 1.9 billion years old, uh, landing on Earth a very long time ago. So they had plenty of time to weather. Uh, but, you know, because they're pretty tough, they don't, you know, weather like a typical rock would after 1.9 billion years. Yeah. But but they uh, they have this unusual um, sort of metallic color. And here's another angle on it. You can sort of see they have that, again, semi-glassy look. And you can, after you've seen a few of these, you can instantly look at a carbonado diamond and it's it's real or not. It's even easier to tell, you know, the difference between like moldavite, real moldavite versus fake moldavite. Yeah. Fake carbonado diamonds just simply don't have this, this sort of look. And it, it's interesting because they're found in Brazil, Bahia, Brazil, and Central African Republic. And you say, well, those are like 2,000 miles away. Um, what's going on? Well, if you wind time back mm -hmm. to 1.9 billion years ago, the Earth um, looked a lot different and had merged continents back then. And South America and Africa were actually up against each other. And you have a single strewn field across Brazil and Central African Republic, and then they drifted yeah. apart, separated by, uh, again, the tectonic plates moving. So uh, they, the, the best theory on these, and it's not completely proven, um, there is a theory that they're terrestrial, but that doesn't really check because they have extraterrestrial isotopes and they have predominantly hydrogen in them, whereas earth diamonds have more nitrogen in them. So the, the ratio of elements in them isn't right, the isotopes aren't right, and these carbonado diamonds are not found in pegmatic veins, which is where all the rest of the terrestrial diamonds are found. So very different in that sense. Some people said, well, maybe it's radiation, and the radiation caused the carbon to form diamonds. Uh, I don't, that's my least favorite theory. Um, <laughs> then there's another theory they're formed by impact, uh, meaning that an asteroid uh, hit in Earth and, and hit some carbon deposits or had carbon deposits in it and formed these, um, that has some merit. It must have been really big because you saw the ones in Canyon Diablo were millimeter-sized, 
So imagine how big it must have been to produce, you know, things like this. That must yeah. have been something. And uh, Steve Haggerty uh, published a paper, a um, couple papers actually, and his theory is that they were formed in a supernova. And that's a very interesting theory yeah. because it would allow them to be quite large. Um, it would allow the, it would certainly explain where you got enough pressure and heat yeah. Uh, yeah. to form something like this. I think supernova definitely uh, checks the mm -hmm. box on pressure yeah. and heat. And the, they could theoretically be up to a kilometer in size if that was uh, wow. how it formed. And imagine a meteorite or a, an asteroid that was primarily carbonado hitting the earth. It would shatter. Diamond is very brittle. Shatter them all over. And so you might have had an event where a large carbonado asteroid uh, hit right around uh, what was then Brazil and Central Africa and uh, created this uh, occurrence. So very interesting things. This is, this is, again, it's not proven. It's probably meteoric. Mm -hmm. I'd say high odds on it. That's the best theory these days, either from impact or from uh, uh, the supernova theory. But work in progress, uh, but it's definitely uh, uh, a fun thing. So in summary, uh, if uh, you see meteorites for sale somewhere uh, and they claim diamonds, if they're bigger than a millimeter or two or Lonsdaleite, mm, unlikely unless it's a carbonado. Carbonados look like charcoal. They're not usually very big and they have that glassy look. If they don't have that glassy look, probably not real. So caveat emptor. Fantastic, a little Latin with you today. Uh, I really appreciate you, you digging into that and giving us some examples. And the, the the gradation of shock in the Canyon Diablo was cool to witness uh, in the graphite nodule from basically a normal one of cutting like butter to one that took eight days to cut. <clears throat> and it literally shows, it explains to me visually, it's the same exact material. It just went through different events, shock events, that caused the same exact composition to be transformed into another assemblage. And that's really all we're talking about when you boil it down. Exactly. Well, Scott, thank you so much for your time. I, I think we're going to check in with Sue for a chat check to see if we have any crew questions. The Lawn's Delight is in plates that we are seeing on the edge. Pat asked that a while ago. Yeah, the Lons, de, the Lons de Light is um, embedded within the diamond. It's a mix of Lons de Light and diamond. It isn't like in a separate oh. region or zone. So okay. uh, that's why you, you, you see it intermixed. And if you look at the Garvey paper on that, they have some uh, uh, SEM pictures on that and, and you can see, but it's it's uh, intermixed and it's like little little dots of Lons de Light embedded within uh, graphite and diamond all mixed. So sort of a slurry with a little Lons Delight in it. It's not like you get a Lons Delight crystal. It's more, uh, uh, you have to use x-ray diffraction to prove it's there. I think that's really important to remember and focus on. We also talk about the exact same thing. It's not a garnet or a ruby that's sitting there in the middle of a diamond like a geode you crack open. When Mike did his 101 on colors of the rainbow uh, ge or gems and meteorites, we were talking about microscopic stuff. And that's exactly, we started the conversation today with, with Scott emphasizing the word nano diamonds. And let's, let's, I want to close loop with that as well. We're talking about nano everything, super small, not gem quality um clear diamonds that you're going to put on on your girl's ring we're talking about you know dirty industrial type looking diamonds scott once again thank you very much for being our, our guest tonight and 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 taking us through the reality of diamonds in meteorites so thanks a lot everyone remember if this is the kind of uh, education and entertainment you enjoy we would really like you to support us on patreon or on youtube if not Enjoy your night, guys. Bye.